Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about a majority of cryptocurrencies. Uh, we're going to be talking about XRP, QNT, Casper, HBAR, you name it. Um, pretty much everything. So let's just dive in. Let's start off with this article going all the way back to August 3rd, 2022 from Ripple themselves. We do see the Ripple drop, episode 28, Intrapability in Blockchain. So if we do scroll down here, uh, we do see we've seen the power and opportunity that lies within blockchain technology through use cases that support cross-border payments, reduce voter fraud, increase the efficiency of supply chain and management, and lower healthcare cost. The advancements made possible by blockchain are vast, and leveraging the benefits of multiple blockchain platforms via interoperability can create an even greater impact. Now, as we do look at this, yes, there is interoperability solutions out there being created. In fact, there's a lot around XRP Ledger that can support the multi-chain feature through innovations like sidechains, for an example. What do you see the state of interoperability today? Blockchain interoperability refers to a range of techniques that help blockchains communicate through a seamless transfer of data, enabling improved collaboration and efficient transfer of digital assets. The objective of interoperability is how do we have it, right? How do we have it all? How can we use our value in all these different ways without needing to have these siloed ecosystems? Many blockchain projects are currently working on interoperability. Um, there are several approaches to facilitating interactions between blockchains. One approach is layer zero projects, which are essentially an underlying blockchain designed to act as a connector for other layers. Now, you guys already know me. I personally love quant for interoperability. We will talk about that here in a second. Um, there's cross-chain bridges, which we know that these bridges are not good. They're actually very insecure, um, and there's a lot of problems tied to them. Now, we know that bridges have integrated with blockchains such as the XRP Ledger already in terms of all bridge, multi-chain, and even Apex, um, as well as Ethereum and Avalanche and others to facilitate the transfer of value cross-chain. Yet another approach is through sidechains, a parallel network that derives its value by inter uh, interpreting uh, data for from and exchanging assets between the main chain and the sidechain, uh, which is a huge thing like that. That's that's very large. But the problem here is that, you know, as we do really kind of look at interoperability, it's not just how can we connect to other chains? It's how can we connect to the world as well? Uh, because the traditional world of finance needs to be bridged to this world of finance, if you will, the new world of finance, which I like to call it. And how can we do that? How can we do it? How are we going to do it? It's very simple, right? I believe that quant is the key to it all. And talking even about CBDCs, right? Like we know Ripple is adamant about CBDCs. We know CBDCs are happening uh, around the world. We know Hedera is the, on the CBDC game. Casper is looking at CBDCs. Almost any blockchain network out there, I shouldn't even say blockchain, DLT network out there um, is looking at CBDCs. What do you see over here from Quant, an FT Live's recent digital asset summit, Gilbert Verdian recommended that the best way to identify the impact and benefits of CBDCs is to just go ahead and test them in practice. Listen closely. I think um, we're, we're in a, a CBDC catalyst at the moment. And what, what I mean by that is there's been a lot of policy thinking, a lot of economic thinking to date. And a lot of the, uh, the next level of thinking is what does this mean to consumers? What does this mean to businesses? And what does this mean to the economy? And the common theme we're seeing with the work we're doing with central banks is the only way to answer those questions is to practically test it with your local domestic and commercial banks to understand what does this mean. So from, from our perspective, I mean, we're, we're an infrastructure provider. We, we create the issuance of CBDCs and the interoperability of CBDCs with, with payment systems. And the, the common themes are around, uh, you know, why a digital pound, why a digital euro, why a digital dollar? And it's, it's an, an evolution of money. And, and, you know, cash is always going to be there, as, as, as Tom was just saying. But having a digital form of, of cash, a new form of smart money, can really unlock a lot of benefits to consumers and businesses because we're right now relying on a, a traditional architecture of push and pull payments and having logic built in by having uh, the ability to program money to do uh, innovative things is going to really transform how GDP can grow, how businesses can uh, reduce workflows, and how consumers can spend a, a, a new form of money. So we're right at the beginning of that thinking, but the next step is to practically test it with your local domestic banks. 
And yeah, I mean, like, as we do look at CBDCs, they're in a very, very high demand, and it's only going to continue to grow from here on out in terms of the demand for central bank digital currencies, programmable money, stable coins, things like that. Um, and it's going to be hard to issue out these and utilize them in the real world. That's why we need that interoperability bridge. Also, remember, over here last week at FT Live's Digital Assets Summit, again, the Bank of England Director for Central Bank Digital Currencies, Tom Mutton, su summarized how the bank sees the nature of a digital pound. Listen closely to this as well. Um, we very much see it as a digital banknote, so it's something for everyday payments. Um, because it's Bank of England money, it would be risk-free. Uh, but you wouldn't have an account with the Bank of England. You would be... Uh, accessing the services through a, a private sector provided digital wallet or smart card. Um, it would be unremunerated, it wouldn't pay interest. Um, and it would be private, but not anonymous. Um, the reason for that is we think that it's important there is some level of identity information uh, to make sure that there's uh, no opportunities for fraud or financial crime. But none of that identity information would be passed to the Bank of England. And really importantly, uh, cash will be available for as long as people wish to use it. Uh, and that's a very firm commitment from both the bank uh, and the government. So, yeah, uh, I, I mean, as we do really kind of look at central bank digital, digital currencies, there's so much opportunity here. But how will this come to fruition? Well, it's very sim uh, simple, right? As we look at the Digital Pound Foundation itself, we know that Ripple and Quant are two of the major uh, projects labeled on here. As you guys do see, Ripple and Quant are working on this with Electronium, and there's a few other ones as well. Avalanche is even on here. Um, the thing is, is that the way that I envision the future around crypto, digital assets, CBDCs, things like that, is that yes, DLT will be the digital rails of tomorrow's future. I think that as we do look at digital money and you know even crypto itself, um, there's a lot of crucial infrastructure that needs to be there first and i think that quant is it as we look at quant on their website we do see unlocking benefits for all assets of all kinds from currencies to carbon credits are being tokenized on blockchain financial institutions enterprises and their customers all benefit from assets whose ownership is immutable providence is traceable and use is easier to manage entirely new digital economies are emerging as a result yes we are seeing the new financial economy, uh, global financial economy as well, rise, and it's all centered out on digital technologies, DLT, uh, stablecoin issuance, CBDC issuance on DLT as well, private ledger technology. I mean, this is becoming a big deal. Now, how will all this be connected? Well, we do see over here from Quant, opening doors to the blockchain economy. Overledger establishes a new benchmark for blockchain interoperability and ease of use. As an enterprise-grade yet low-code platform, Overledger enables you to deploy chain-agnostic digital assets, connect systems, and develop applications on any blockchain quickly and simply built specifically for businesses seeking a safe, simple, and future-proof way to enter the blockchain world. With Overledger, you can tokenize funds and alternative assets, tokenize deposits, create next-generation payment systems, build multi-DLT applications, connect to multiple enterprise systems as well. This is ultimately powering the global digital economy. This is the infrastructure that tomorrow's world will essentially be built upon, in my opinion. Um, and all of these DLTs will be crucial to this. Um, and Quant is that interoperability bridge that we need. That, that This is what we need. This is a huge obstacle to the success of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. And um, I'm very excited for this. Even if you scroll down, we do see the enterprise standard, which I will dive into ISO twenty uh, ISO uh, TC three hundred seven here in in a second. It's actually larger than ISO um, twenty zero two two, which I know that a lot of people were bullish on. Uh, but we do see one platform, less complexity, more freedom. We do see overledger flows, overledger APIs, quant smart uh, tokens, as well as multi chain. Um, all of these are crucial to the success of crypto. We all see down here the major um, DLTs and networks tied to this. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Hyperledger, Basu, XRP, Polygon, Polkadot, XDC. XDC is a crucial one here as well. Hyperledger, Fabric, and Avalanche. What's crazy about this is that, you know, Hyperledger is an absolute giant. Hyperledger Foundation is tied to almost all of the major players outside um, of crypto. Also, Accenture. Accenture is a huge one um, because Accenture is a massive giant, which we've broken down many times in the past around Ripple. We you see DLT will unlock the full digital potential of capital markets in the wider financial services industry by enabling a shift away from the current re reconciliation-based uh, systems that are very expensive and highly inefficient. 
Uh, key to that journey is to have standards and shared platforms that are utilized across industry participants. The Open Ledger project is a great step forward in that process, and we are thrilled to be a part of it. Um, but if you scroll down here, there's so many large names. Um, you have IBM, Hitachi, Fujitsu, Fujitsu uh, DTCC, which is they are moving and settling $2.5 quadrillion worth of uh, securities per year. You also do see Casper down here. You might be wondering, like, you know, where's where's my uh, where's my uh, network here? There's no H bar. There's no Casper. Well, here you guys have it. It's through Hyperledger. Like you have Casper here. Um, you have Hedera down here. I mean, you have global um, companies here, global banks. I mean, you name it. IP Wee's even on here, which is a direct connection to uh, Casper. Or threes on here. Ripple's on here. Um, Visa, Walmart. I mean, you like this is the key to it all even the digital pound foundations on here the digital euro associations on here the ethereum uh enterprise ethereum alliance as well um i mean this is a big one to watch for i mean stellar's even on here xlm um i mean you name it so this is a very exciting one to definitely look into and by the way it, there's a lot more as well but Again, there's just so much tied to Hyperledger. And also, by the way, shout out to Matthew Lin Y. He posted this Hyperledger update, May 2023. Members equals $8 trillion. Crypto projects will be utilized. Check this out. So you are viewing 144 cards with a total market cap of $8.2 trillion and funding of $11 billion. This is the type of money that's going to flow into crypto over, uh, over the course of the next couple of years. You are viewing 144 cards with a total market cap of 8.2. Here's even more. Uh, again, you see Casper there. You see. You know some other players as well um and he's just kind of showing all the rest of the members as well i mean like there's so many members tied to this so i'm very excited about this and again you know having that direct connection back to quant allows for all of the major uh names tied to this i mean we're talking about banks uh corporations companies um to all have exposure and interoperability to dlts and it's all of them, you know, XRP, the, the major ones, X, XRP, HBAR, Casper, XDC, Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. So very, very exciting. Now, also, I think that's kind of funny how um, a center said capital markets here, because if we actually look at the projects tied to quant, we do see digital currencies, payments, capital markets, supply chain and ESG. Um, tokenization is a very large one. Uh, I mean, these are just some of the you know, projects that are building out or being built out on quant and that are here. Most of the world's central banks are experiment or experimenting with digital currencies while commercial banks are ready in complementary products such as tokenized deposits and smart money, payments, cross-border payment networks, micropayments, all of that. Capital markets, obviously, again, focused on tokenization and pulls the liquidity. Like this is what, what I've been focused on around QNT. It's a long-term game with QNT, but it's a long-term game that I'm so excited about because you know, again, I, I say that QNT is like the new age Bitcoin um, because of the l much lower uh, tokenomics um, and a lot more utility. A lot of people don't think that QNT is being utilized on quant, but it is. It's utilized for most of almost everything that happens on quant. Now, also, ISO TC 307, you can't have DLT and crypto adoption without standardization. ISO TC 307 is created from quant um from gilbert verdian actually and we do see blockchain and dlt standardization of blockchain technologies and dlt very exciting you can see published iso standards 10 7 iso standards under development 44 participating members you can check out the members by the way if you wanted to uh look into you know some of the members here you guys have them um again this is a global initiative it's very very exciting um this is only going to continue to grow and grow and grow and you can see that things are starting to be put in place standardization is here and you can see a few of the references here in terms of the structure so we could see Digital currencies obviously being one of them, guidance for auditing DLT systems, um, representation of physical assets as NFTs, again, tokenization of physical assets, DLT and carbon markets. Um, there's a lot tied to this. Smart contracts and their applications, foundations, governance, use cases, interoperability, you name it. Um, very, very exciting. Now, also, you can see TC307 in the news. This goes all the way back to like 2017, 2020 as well. Not really much new news, but um, there is over here, if we go back, last update four days ago, this is from the ECB, the European Commission, um, blockchain and DLT. And if we actually look into this and look at ISO, um, let, me zoom, let me go down here real quick. So 
There's a lot to read up at the top. I'm going to read that as well. But down here, we do see ISO TC307 blockchain and DLT has wide global outreach and involves majority of the EU member states. The technical committee and works with reference uh, architecture, taxonomy and ontology, cybersecurity, identity, use case, and interoperability and other aspects of blockchain standardization for standardization. Technical reports have already been published. This is vocabulary, privacy and personally identifiable information protection considerations, overview of and interactions between smart contracts in blockchain and DLT systems, as well as security management of digital asset custodians. Um, this is very exciting because, again, this is the standardization that we need in order to have that global scale. We do see to draw up best practices and guidance which support the implementation of those applications and services on a global scale and to propose a way forward for related standardization work in ITU T study groups. Again, they want to adopt DLT. They want um, you know to utilize this for the next evolution of payments and finance technology. Uh, this is here, you know, crypto is here to stay. Blockchain technology is here to stay. And um, a lot of the players tied to this are global initiatives. You have the W3C, the IETF, um, and so many other ones as well. I mean, like there's so many major players tied to this, even the United Nations, um, International Association of Trusted Blockchain Applications as well. Again, this is the standardization around this technology. And if we scroll all the way up back to the top, um, we could see one thing that really kind of stood out to me, which was this to bring together Horizon 2020 and blockchain standardization communities. Uh, the European Commission has set up a set of roundtable discussions, ICT verticals and horizontals for blockchain standardizations. These roundtables took place during the second half of 2020 and the start of 2021 with the following theme groups, fintech, digital assets and smart grids, digital society, identity and privacy, digital economy, SMEs, industry and supply chains, cybersecurity, IoT, Internet of Things, e-health, future internet, media and big data, sustainable development goals, smart contracts, artificial intelligence as well. And then more than 70 Horizon 2020 projects have participated as well as the standardization experts of ISO, CEN, CEN, uh, LLEC, uh, ETSI, ITU, T, the IEEE, W3C, and the IT, IETF. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is, in my opinion, um, a global initiative centered out on moving towards this new financial system, this new evolution of financial technology that will disrupt every single aspect of life. I mean, we are talking about, you know, the healthcare world, we're talking about supply chains, uh, the digital economy itself, like the global digital economy, identity, privacy, society itself, smart grids. I mean, you name it. This is literally everything that you could think about being disrupted. And it's all starting, you know, through these standardizations and interoperability approaches that will touch every single aspect of life. I mean, DLT is here. We are seeing the major transformative push around a lot of these areas of interest. Um, and almost every single major, I mean, literally every single major network, even SWIFT, that is tied to Hyperledger Foundation will have exposure to DLT and crypto at some point in the future. We actually already just talked about a few things around SWIFT with XDC just recently. Um, I mean, there's a lot happening here. And I think that everyone needs to focus on the key players that are building out the infrastructure of, you know, tomorrow centered out on DLT and a lot of these major networks. And uh, these are networks of networks. These are the global networks of networks that are being built out and connected to quant. I think that quant is the secret, um, you know, connector for all of these to connect to the traditional world of finance. I mean, we're talking about capital markets, equity markets. I mean, it, it, the list goes on and on and on. And we are seeing CBDCs rise. I think like the last time that we looked, there was like over 90% of, uh, you know, global central banks and economies, et cetera, that were looking into CBDCs. It's happening. It's happening. And it's going to happen over time. Remember, keyword there over time. You got to be patient on these things because, I mean, this is literally the evolution of our global financial system and life as we know it. So, with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, and notifications on. If you guys have more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. Uh, so, as with you all, have a beautiful day. Be beautiful night. Wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, it's been Nick. Peace out, guys.